Five years after the Great War, the Northern Kingdoms continued to suffer. Rivers flowed red with elven blood, and life was cheaper than a fistful of coppers. The world needed a hero. They said he arrived on the wings of a storm to help the downtrodden. They said he'd gone mad and died. They called him the Sword of Destiny. They said he returned, for only evil can vanquish evil. In truth, Geralt of Rivia reappeared, barely breathing and bereft of memory, near the Witcher's citadel of Caer Morhen. The wild hunt, War's Omen, sped across the sky, while in Vizima, a cow gave birth to a two-headed calf. All other claims are legend. At Caer Morhen, Geralt recovered, yet even his one-time lover, the powerful sorceress Triss Merigold, could not restore his memory. The calm would not last. Armed brigands led by the sorcerer Azar Javid and the professor, a killer for hire, attacked the citadel. Though bandit blood stained Caer Morhen's walls, the attackers made off with their prize. The secrets of Witcher mutation, concealed for centuries, disappeared in a flash of magic. The Witchers set off on a search, as tradition ordained, to the four corners of the world. Geralt of Rivia went south to the Temerian capital of Vizima, where he'd once cured a princess of a curse. When the cat is away, King Foltes was nowhere in sight and Vizima was in turmoil. The Order of the Flaming Rose, Grand Master Jacques de Aldersberg at its head, pursued its crusade against non-humans. With whips and chains, swords and fire, the Order's ruthless steel-clad knights hunted all those they deemed strange for their ears or their stature. In Vizima, the Witcher picked up the bandit's trail. He learned they were members of Salamandra, a secret criminal guild. Brutal in their methods, they dealt in fistech, murder, and extortion. Geralt didn't know these were means to a darker girl. As the Witcher hunted Salamandra, he was drawn into the conflict between the Scoyatel rebels and the Order of the Flaming Rose. The two sides finally clashed in the swamp near Vizima. Knights of the Order and Scoyatel fought a bloody battle, while Geralt faced Azar Javid and the Professor. The mage felled Geralt with powerful spells leaving him as fodder for swamp monsters. Triss saved the witcher's life. He recovered under her nurturing hand. She introduced him to powerful politicians and influential merchant guildsmen. The mood in the city was tense. Confined to ghettos, non-humans spoke openly of mutiny. There was no sign of the king. Geralt found allies for his struggle against Salamandra. The witcher resumed his hunt. He destroyed Salamandra's secret fistech factories and killed the Professor. The Witcher found Azar Javid's hideout. This time Geralt was prepared and no spells the renegade mage threw at him could stop his sword. Yet the stolen Witcher's secrets were in the hands of another, Jacques de Aldersberg, Grand Master of the Order. Provoked by the knights, non-humans rebelled. De Aldersberg responded, releasing his greater brothers, the horrific result of his experiments with the Witcher's mutagens. Vizima was in flames and dying. Enter Foltest and his army. The king summoned the Witcher and demanded the head of the Grand Master, a monster in human form and a usurper. The Witcher set out in search of Jacques de Aldersberg and the stolen Witcher's secrets. The Grand Master plunged Geralt into his vision of the future, where the Wolf's Blizzard would destroy the world and kill all, no matter their race or abilities. De Aldersberg wished to create superhumans, ensuring the survival of the human race. It was a vision Geralt rejected. He drove his sword through the Grand Master's heart and did well. For the vision was naught but a madman's nightmare. They say the King of the Wild Hunt appeared to claim De Aldersberg's soul. They say the Grand Master was an evil man, for the Wild Hunt comes only for the filthiest and most vile. They say only evil can vanquish evil, but those are only legends. In truth, Geralt recovered the Witcher's secrets and Vizima proclaimed him a hero. Yet life is no fairy tale. One story ends, another begins. As the King handed the Witcher his reward, an assassin attacked. His cat-like eyes and medallion were unmistakable, but that is another story. Rivia, population 1,234. In that, 253 non-humans. September the 25th, 1268, a riot erupts. A massacre ensues. Streets run with the blood of elves and dwarves. One person finds the courage to face the raging crowd.
During the rioting, 76 non-humans perished, including the witch Geralt of Rivia. Stabbed in the chest with a pitchfork by a man of whom we know only that his name was Rob, and he owed three crowns at the local tavern. Yennefer of Vengerberg died as trying to heal the witch. The bodies of Geralt and the sorceress are taken away by a mysterious young girl with ashen hair. Their place of internment remains unknown. I remember. Rivia. Yennefer. Yennefer told me that Ciri has departed for good. She inhabits another world and is happy there. Before she left this one, she gave us the Isle of Avaloch, our island. We stopped counting time. People believe that the wraiths of the Wild Hunt are immortal. They race across the heavens, gripping in their bony hands swords, their lightning bolts. They take away mortals, ever expanding their cavalcade of spectral riders. They burned the orchard and the house. In their armored boots, they trampled our island. September 13th, 1269, the Ravine of the Hydra. Following the peace of Sintra, 53 officers of the Vryhead Brigade were brought here and executed, their throats cut. The elves' bodies were dropped into the chasm. I don't know what the riders of the hunt were looking for. November 23rd, 1269, Sintra, the village of cold water, and another victim of the hunt. An 11-year-old boy, his parents didn't even ask if he had a chance. I'm tired. February 24th, 1270, a high pass in the Armouche Mountains. An Imperial Manticore, one of the world's oldest and deadliest monsters. I used to feel excitement at moments like this. Now the beast is only an obstacle on my way. Its meat and hot blood will help me survive this icy hell. May 30th, 1270, the Ruga River. The hunt continues to race south. Since I've been following them, they've taken 23 individuals, all between the ages of 10 and 20. All except for Yennefer. July 25th, 1270. The forests of Angren. No mighty mortal, no heap of meat or strong man can parry the strike of the slizzard's tail. Letho couldn't either, but by some miracle he survived. I helped him. After all, witchers on the path should help each other. He had two comrades, brother witchers from the school of the Viper. The hunt continued south, and Letho of Gullet knew where it was going. He knew where the hellish chase would end. Winter Solstice 1270, Middenvern, the Night of Magic. Letho wasn't lying, the hunt had stopped. At the Hanged Man's Tree, the spectral riders selected from among those they had taken. Yennefer was among them. A wraith cannot be killed, only driven away. Every Witcher knows that. Yet the riders fell beneath the blows of our Witcher's blades. Crimson blood flowed from under their dead men's armor. We could not kill them all. They were simply too many, a stalemate. He was different from all other elves. There was no shame in his gaze. He had never suffered persecution. He had endured no massacres. Humans had not taken his land. This elf was not of this world. He was an invader. We struck a deal. My soul for that of Yennefer. He agreed without hesitation. I see you gather before me. Hungry, terrified, clutching your babes to your breast. Emperor Emir 
has marched his legions into our lands, laid siege to every fortress from here to the Blue Mountains. Rabid and ravenous, he bites and bites away. Men of the North, you stand at the precipice. Your kings have failed you, so now you turn to the gods. And yet you do not plead. You do not kneel to dust your heads with ash. Instead, you wail, why have the gods forsaken us? We must look into the trials we failed long ago. In a time past, our world intertwined with another through an upheaval scholars call the conjunction of the spheres. The gods allowed unholy forces to slip into our domain. The offspring of that cataclysm was the nefarious force called magic. Yet we did not banish it, instead studying the vile arcane for our own power and wealth. And the monsters at our door, the unholy relics of this conjunction, the trolls, the corpse eaters, the werewolves, did we raise our swords against them? Or have we laid this burden on others? On so-called witches. Stray children taught the ways of foul sorcery, their bodies mutated through blasphemous ritual. Sent to fight monsters, though they could not distinguish good from evil. The flicker of humanity, long extinguished within them. <laughs> yes, their numbers have dwindled through the years. But a few still roam our lands, offering their bloody work for coin. To this day, they shame us with their very existence. The North bleeds! Flogged by war! The battles are the gods' whip, chastisement for our sins. And let us not forget the terrors, the scourges from beyond our world. The wild hunt rides the sky with every full moon. The Dark Raiders abduct our children into lands unknown. Some say they herald a second conjunction. Can we chart a course back into the light? Will we find the strength to banish the mages from our kingdoms? Unite around the warmth of the eternal fire. Nigh is the time of the sword and axe. None will fight this war in our stead. Nigh! It's the time of madness and disdain.
was wide awake Fearing all manner of ghouls, hags and raves Nice tune. Been a while since I heard it last. Folk have forgotten it. Got other things on their mind. Things like me. They paid me for you. <laughs> In times past, no amount of coin would convince a witcher to take this contract. Times have changed.
doesn't need a hero. It needs a professional. I hang in. Or dormant. Don't meddle. Take the reward and let's go. Help me! Our witches wouldn't scorn imperial gold. Tough hunt. Tougher than yours, that's certain. Evil is evil. Lesser, greater, middling makes no difference. Get the bitch, get the hammer. Get our teeth in. The degree is arbitrary, the definitions blurred. If I'm to choose between one evil and another, I'd rather not choose at all. Just make it quick, Geralt. What the? Close your eyes. Hit him! Tu t'enfuis à l'aube, ton 
parfum de groseille et de lilas Je veux sentir tes longues boucles noires Et me perdre dans tes yeux mauvais Brillants de larmes Non, c'est si tu es un Afasta dos meus sonhos Crijovnik terpki Sladka e sirene Hachu Vai sne tvoi vidite Loka Chorni Fialki glas tvoi Što slez tumanit Long 
ago, to isolate themselves from a world of beasts, humans began building cities. But since beasts prowl within stone walls as well as they do outside them, this did not allay human fears. The truth is, walls guarantee no one's safety. The place where you lock yourself in and lock all else out, that's not your home. Your home is sometimes a place you travel long and far to find. Hatred and prejudice will never be eradicated. And witch hunts will never be about witches. To have a scapegoat, that's the key. Humans always fear the alien, the odd. Once the mages had left Novigrad, folk turned their anger against the other races. And as they have for ages, branded their neighbors their greatest foes. Street side soothsayers, chiromancers, herbalists and healers. Though townsfolk had always sought their help, they'd never trusted them. Folk generally dislike those privy to their fears and weaknesses. The free city of Novigrad became a trap for all mages. Its merchants, craftsmen, and burghers held their breath when death came for those they despised. And they never expected the mages to take up arms, fight back. For ages, men had shed each other's blood in the quest for Skellige's crown. Politics as usual, just a difference of degree. Yet the bloody feast at Kaer Trolda was different. It was dishonorable, treacherous, needed investigation. More witcher's work. Work that culminated with the crowning of the Isle's new ruler. In Skellige, anyone can be king. All they need is the Jarls on their side. Sometimes a mediocrity gets just that, and the Isles get a ruler that claims no respect. No one expected much of Svanriga, of Clan Twersech, but he went down in history as the founder of a dynasty, and as the king who united all the clans against Nilfgaard. That was a good game. Yeah.